Shalom, our fellow subscribers. Welcome to another episode of the Sword Cut Sharpie 2 channel. I'm Priest Brother 2 Opera Khan. I have Rita for me in the background. This is my shot. Khan. All right. Um, part of the noise, if you do hear it in the background, some work is being done to the house. Um, these guys are supposed to have been done already. But, um, you know, late this, this Satan trying to hinder this word going out. But the brother, my shot, and I decided to proceed with the filming anyways. Um, and the topic of uh, the video by request would be and will be this week is the um the role of the actual gentiles and this will be the introduction to a series of videos that will be entitled rcm okay for those brothers out there that do not know what the acronym rcm stands for it stands for ruling class mentality okay and this is what we're going to be pushing on the minds of you brothers out there and there's a like scattered worldwide a ruling class mentality now, what exactly is a ruling class mentality? It's very simple. It's when you know that you're an Israelite from your respective tribe, and when you understand that you are a son of the Most High, and that there's order in the Son of the Most High's kingdom, all right? And in the Son of the Most High's kingdom, the order starts with the Most High himself, the Father, okay? And then it trickles down to the Prince, his Prince, his right hand, which is his son, the Messiah, Christ, okay? And then it triggers down from Christ all the way to the 12 disciples, and then from the 12 disciples, it triggers down the order to the 144,000. And within 144,000, you have your different men that have ranks. But the bottom line is underneath the 144,000 comes the commonwealth of Israel. Underneath the commonwealth of Israel is the dark nations, the Gentiles. Underneath for the dark nations, the Gentiles lies at the bottom, Esau, the so-called white race. And so eventually extermination for them as well. That's the order that the Mosai has set up on this earth. And amongst that order, amongst the nation of Israel, as well amongst the Gentiles, there's an order of men first, okay, women second, rank amongst men, then women, then children, okay? That's the RCM, and that's a mentality that brothers got to have to start inputting themselves in their daily routine, man, okay? Stop being effeminate, okay, and become more masculine, become more spiritual in the scriptures, Okay, stop following after the woman and realize that the woman is supposed to be following after you in righteousness, man. All right, basically just step your mental, masculine, and spiritual game up. That's what that represents. And this title of it will be this week, the actual Gentiles. Okay, the role of them. All right, because now uh, we've made videos on Romans the 11th chapter. We've made videos on actual Gentiles in itself. We have yet to get into the Israelite Gentiles or the Israelite foreigners, but that's something that will be brought out in a special segment, Lord's well in the near future upon request. But this was a request from a fellow Israelite brother slash subscriber of ours to go into this actual role of the Gentiles. Men seem to be confused about the Gentiles' place in the present time we're living in, as well as in the kingdom to come. But before that, the wilderness, where a lot of men and women of our nation are going to get purged out by Christ, okay, and 144,000 elect men of the Lord. Okay, that's going to be purging out men who don't have the RCM, men that don't keep the commandments of the Most High while you're house shot, men that just want to be up under their women all day, they're going to be purged out, man. And the women that want to follow after them and be exalted, they definitely going to be purged out. But that's going to be on upcoming topics dealing with the RCM, Most High will in upcoming videos. This one is dealing with the role of the actual Gentiles. What is the purpose of the actual Gentiles? What are they supposed to be doing? concerning the men of the Lord, towards the men of the Lord, and it could go into their women as well, okay? What are the Gentile women supposed to be doing? It's very simple. They're supposed to be dealing with the Israelite men. <laughs> what other purpose is there? Bring forth Israelite seed, okay? Israelite dominance over the entire earth and righteousness. When the Most High told Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob that what? He was going to multiply their seed like the stars of heaven. And the Most High said, curse be those that curse you and your seed, and bless all those that bless you and your seed. That sums up the Gentile situation right there. They're going to be blessed and catering and serving the 12 tribes of Israel. And they're going to be cursed by disrespecting and not wanting to willingly serve the 12 tribes of Israel. That's why Esau, the so-called white race, is condemned because they don't have that mentality. So they will never have that mentality because we was fighting with them since our womb when you go back to Genesis, the 25th chapter. So let's go into the book of Joshua, chapter 6, verse 25. Okay, because you got certain men out there making videos about Ruth and Rakab not being Israelites because they was women of the Lord, okay, following after the Lord. So they had to be Israelites because they were doing that. That's the mentality. 
okay, that's being pushed by a lot of men out there as well as certain other, okay, women out there as well. And that's, that's like, like the brother that's in the UK right now, he's uploading a video that the brother Marshall and I did, okay, about a year ago when we was at war with GMS. And it was, um, the video was called, um, the, um, Gentiles of, um, what's called spiritual Gentiles and, uh, and, uh, tear, uh, spiritual tears and Gentiles of the flesh. Okay. And that was, the uh, um, the, the video is being uploaded on a Baha Shem Yahawashah channel on YouTube. Okay. From a brother from UK, London. He's uploaded already, I think, four parts already. And the video, we went into portions of the role of the actual Gentiles concerning that. The whole point that just because a man or a woman, Okay, gets the understanding of his truth and knows it and, and knows that we are Israelites. That don't represent that they're Israelites too, and willing to serve the God of Israel. That's quite far from contrary. You gonna have a lot of Gentiles in these last days that's gonna want to cleave and serve the God of Israel. Guess what? That's what they were created to do: serve the God of Israel through us as our servants and slaves. That's it. Joshua chapter six, verse twenty-five, brother. And Joshua saved Rahab the harlot alive. Right, so why did Joshua save Rahab the harlot alive? Okay, why is any Gentile woman is going to be delivered and saved in these last days? Read. And her father's household and all that she had. Right, and all the household, I mean all the Gentiles that are delivered unto with this woman. Read. And she dwelleth in Israel even unto this day. Right, the, she dwelt in Israel unto this day. So you had a Gentile woman named Rahab that dwelleth with the children of Israel to this day. Now, if you don't know the story of Rahab, I advise you to read the book of Joshua. Start from the second chapter, okay? Because it's going to go to the story of Rahab, okay? And you will get the understanding that Rahab was a race trader, okay? And that's what we're looking for amongst the Gentile women, race traders, okay? You got some of them that's already uh, making videos on YouTube, willingly wanting to be a race trader, Okay? Remember that um that woman from the Netherlands on Facebook, huh? Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, from the Netherlands, that Ishmaelite. Yeah. Yeah, she said she wanted Hebrew as a light king. Mm -hmm. As her man. Okay, she's a race trader. She don't give a damn about the camel jockey Arabs. Nope. Okay. She wanted as a light man. She wants a black and Hispanic or Native American Seminole Indian man to take her, okay, bed her, concubine her, okay, so have her submit to them and bring forth the seed. That's the whole point, man. This is world domination to the spirit of Christ. This is chess, not checkers, man. Okay, this is what the men of the Lord are supposed to be doing, man. Okay, we're supposed to, this is, this is, they, they, they the, uh, listen, we pack, man. They the ghosts when they turn blue, man. Okay, that's it through the spirit of Most High Christ, man. We eating them up, man. They're going to either cleave or they die. Okay, and Rahab was a woman that did that. And no, she was not an Israelite. Okay. This was a Gentile Canaanite woman that lived in Jericho that basically decided that she was going to hide the 12 Israelite lords of hers, the spies, okay? And the reason why she did that was because she realized that her people were finished, mm -hmm. okay? And she knew that the Israelite men were men of the Lord and the real God of Israel was with them. And she either joined with the program or get ran over by the train. So she did a wise thing. Hide here, my lords. Okay, hide because I heard about your God and I've seen and heard of the destruction that he has done to these other nations, Gentiles and the, and the Amorites and the, what he did. Okay, when I came up out of Egypt, so I'm willing to submit. Okay, and she did. So she was saved alive right along her household and boom, it says right here, um, <clears throat> she dwelt off in Israel even unto this day. She became a part of Israel. Mm -hmm. Okay, read on. All right. Because she hid the messenger. Not because she was just a Gentile. Because the Gentiles, the bulk of them are going to be destroyed in, by Christ and put in captivity. But she dwelleth amongst Israel because she hid the messengers, which were the 12 Israelite spies that were sent out. Right? Which Joshua sent to spy out Jericho. Well, I'm not quite sure if it was 12 of them. Maybe that's another story I mixed it up with. But there were certain spies that Joshua sent to spy out Jericho. Okay, maybe I'm mixing up the story of Moses, Salat. But there were spies that Jer uh, Joshua had sent out and to spy out Jericho. Okay, and she hid them from her people trying to kill them. Because they knew that Israelites were coming to run them over through the spirit of Christ, Mosai. Okay, and they decided that we see an Israelite, we're going to kill one. But this was a race trader. What she was supposed to do was tell her people there's an Israelite in our castle or in our land. All right, but she said, no, no, I don't know what you're talking about. So she betrayed her race. That's what the Lord is looking for 
That's what the men of the Lord are looking for. Gentile women who are race traders that are willing to take care of the men of the Lord to the best of their ability as their lords. Okay? Like Rahab did. Okay? Give me um, Hebrews 11.31. And Paul spoke about that. Okay? Paul spoke about that in the New Testament. All right. No, you don't. No, she's not an Israelite woman for her to have done this. Okay, because you're gonna have a lot of Israelite women doing that. You Ruth did it. Okay, okay, a Gentile woman that did it rather. You know, you have Ruth that did it. Okay, she rejected her people to serve the God of Israel and join unto our nation. So this was a, a harlot. Okay, or a Gentile woman that joined unto Israel unto this day. Read Hebrews eleven thirty one. By faith, <laughs> the harlot Rahab perished not with them. That believe not when she had received the spies with peace. Right. The ones that believe not was referring to the other Gentiles. Because the, the whole point is the Gentiles have to believe. First, they got to believe that, number one, Christ is a so called black man. They have to believe that the children of Israel, the so called blacks and Hispanics, and Native American Seminole Indians, they have to believe that we're the supreme laws of the earth through the spread of the Christ and the Messiah. And true and powerful is the Lord God of our power, the only true living power, the Lord God of Israel, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Then they have to understand that the whole world was created for the Israelites' sake. They have to understand that, you know what? We are dogs, okay? And they're the masters. Just like the woman said to Christ, at least the dogs eat up under the tables or the crumbs that fall off the master's table that the children eat from. That's how the Gentiles are going to be. Okay, these last days amongst us and be justified. And the scripture said that she did it by faith. That's the faith of the Gentiles. For them to reject their salvation, which they're temporarily in, and submit to our nation as slaves and servants, especially amongst their women. And that's why Paul was bringing it out. Because she was a harlot amongst her nation. She was a wicked demon. But yet she repented of that to be amongst the people of the Lord, the Lord God of Israel. Okay, and Paul said that's the faith of the Gentiles. When they reject their people, okay, reject their wickedness, and cleave unto our nation as servants and slaves, okay, because she received the spies with peace. In other words, the Gentiles, okay, they receive us in peace, all right, and they recognize us as, mm -hmm. as their lords, okay, that's it. That's the whole role of the Gentiles, and this was an example of that with Rahab. James spoke about that too. Give me, um, Give me James chapter 2 verse 25. We want to go into another video more precise about Rahab, but I just wanted to cover the surface here. Because I don't know there's other Israelites out there that's teaching that she was an Israelite. You know. But the Lord already said that Gentiles were going to be uh, justified by their faith. Which goes back to Genesis the 12th chapter. All those that join into Abraham and his seed. Okay. When they receive us in peace and they join into our household as strangers, servants, and slaves. Okay, James chapter 2, verse 25. Right. Likewise, also, was not Rahab the harlot justified by work? That's the only way the Gentiles are going to be justified, by being our damn servants and slaves, and basically by saying peace unto our men, unto our nation, and willing to do whatever it takes to make sure that we stay alive. And in the midst of that, reject their nation and their false gods. Like Paul spoke about in Acts 17, okay, on Mars Hill. When he, when he had a multitude of mixed nations there, and he got in a spirit of condemnation, of condemning the people that wanted to worship, okay, all these false gods and idols in, in, in Athens, which is, I believe, in Greece. Mm -hmm. You understand? And you had Israelites amongst them. You had Gentiles amongst them. You had Esau amongst them. You had all these nations. Athens was a mixed multitude area city of Greece. And Paul got into a spirit and rebuked everybody for worshiping these idols and told them all to repent of their ignorance and serve the God of Israel. For the Gentiles, that means for you to put away your idols, submit to the God of Israel through us as our servants and slaves. And that's basically it. That's the only way you're going to be justified, through your works. That's going to be the main justification of your faith there. Is like what Ruth did, disregard your people, like Rahab did, and join us to the Israelite men of the Lord. Through the spirit of Bahashem, Yahawashah, Mashiach, the Messiah. That's it. Read on. When she had received the messengers. Right, you must receive the men of the Lord. Okay, because the messengers were the men of the Lord, of the men of Israel. Okay, so the only way the Gentile woman is going to be justified is by her dealing with an Israelite man. Okay, and receiving them. Read. And had sent them out another way. Right, in other words, she hid them and sent them out another way from the wrath of her king of her nation that she was supposed to be in allegiance with. So she was a race trader. 
That's basically what she was. She was a race trader. She rejected her people and their false gods to serve the true living power, the God of Israel. Okay, and she wanted to be part of our nation, and we allowed her to be part of our nation as our servants. Yes, according to the Bible. Now, give me Matthew chapter 1, verse 5. But there's another doctrine going around that this is not the same Rahab in the book of St. Matthew. Just hmm. because it's a different of spelling. It says Rahab. Okay, instead of Rahab. You understand? So you got another group of men that's trying to say that, you know, and certain scholars have even brought this out. But then you got other scholars that say, no, we agree that this is the same Rahab. Okay, here it is. She's being justified in the Old and New Testament. But I'm going to show you something here in Matthew that maybe y'all men really haven't figured out concerning him. Okay, read Matthew chapter 1, verse 5. And Simon begat Boaz read. of Rechab. Mm -hmm. And Boaz begat Obed of Ruth. Mm -hmm. And Obed begat Jesse. Well, you got to understand something about Matthew, man. Okay, Matthew was a man that dealt with chronological numbers. But he was not always precise with the numbering. We already understand that there's like over a 100-year gap between Rechab and Ruth. There was like a close 100-year gap between them two. Okay, I well, understand that. Okay, from the time of the fall of Jericho, from the time of Ruth and the time of Judges, I believe, that was like a over a hundred and something year gap in between them two. Whereas Matthew wrote them down like as if they was right back, like 50 years of each other, back to back. But you have to understand something about why Matthew wrote it like that. It wasn't really set up in that order. Like, okay, this came, and then right after that person came, came that person. No, this was the reason why Matthew wrote it in so, so secluded order. Okay, even though there was a gap in between, he made it seem like as if it was only a few years apart from it. And the reason why, drop down to verse 17. Matthew had a specific way of doing his chronicles. Okay, the chronicles is in the discretion of the author. That's what you have to understand. Just like in the book of Chronicles, all right, it's in the discretion of the author, of the author on how they want to put down the timing of the sons that were born from, from, from women. Okay, Matthew had his own chronicles set up set up for a, a, a specific purpose and that purpose was shown in verse 17 read verse 17 huh? so all the generations from david from abraham to david of 14 generations right read and from david until the day until the carrying away into babylon are 14 generations right and from the carrying away into babylon until the house of 14 generations. Alright, so Matthew was dealing with the div divisible number of seven. Seven represents completion. He wanted to deal with 14 generations. He already set up in his mind when he wrote his book that he wanted to make sure that the genealogy of Christ falls upon the numerical divisible number of seven, which was not the case. Which we could do another show to show you that it was actually more like 15 generations from one man to another, about 17 from one man to another, and about 20 from one man to another. But Matthew wanted everything to be divisible by seven. So he took out certain individuals in between that married a woman that preceded the next generation. He skipped or eluded a lot of those individuals to make it a divisible number of 14 to 7. That's the way he wrote his chronicles and the way he did it concerning Matthew's the first chapter with the going back with the genealogy of our Lord when he walked on the earth in the flesh, born from a man, uh, dealing with a woman, not no damn virgin birth. All right. So that's another topic in itself to show that. All right. Because I did the study and understanding of that. All right. Matthew had his own chronicle way of breaking things down. He alluded certain individuals, okay, in between certain time periods. Just so you can make the numbers divisible by 7 and 14. All right. But that's another topic in itself. But that's the, but this, trust me, that's the same Raha through the spirit. That's the same one. And a lot of scholars will tell you that. In the Greek, when you break that word down in the Greek, it's translated Raha. Okay. Which is the where the New Testament was written. It's translated Raha. You understand? But that's another topic that we're going to get into. Um, um, at another different time. But I just wanted to bring that out too, because I know men will try to say. That, oh, when we bring out that there's two Gentile women in, in the Lord's uh, genealogy, men are going to say that's not true because Ruth was an Israelite, okay, which is false, okay, because you're not going to get a Reubenite being called as a Moabite. That's not going to happen. You're not going to mistake the son of Jacob for a heathen nation, okay? That's not going to happen. Not during those times when Israel was not in captivity and we was not Hellenized by Gentile customs. So that's disgusting, okay? And another thing is, is that Rahab, <laughs> this, brother, <laughs> this brother Basha is shaking his head like it's off. But that's another video we could do. But um, another thing is, too, is um, 
Rahab was a woman of another nation from Jericho. So she was like a Canaanite. You understand? We had our forefathers that dealt with Canaanite women. Some of those Canaanite women, like, I'm going to hit you with something. Um, I wanted to go into Melchizedek, you know, which is another thing, uh, another topic, the king of Salem on that issue. All right. The bottom line is, is that you had certain members of Canaan, okay, that knew of the God of Israel and were willing to worship the God of Israel. The point is, is that the bulk of those Canaanites were off. Okay, the bulk of the Canaanites was off and they were wicked. Yeah, that's not cell phone. That's Satan. Okay, the bulk of the Canaanites were off and they were wicked. All right, and after um, certain members of um, them died off that knew of the covenant of the Most High when he was known as the Awashadja, okay, or the, the, the terrible power, okay, they knew of that God, you understand, which is another topic we're going to do concerning how the Gentiles did receive the law, you understand. But the law that the Gentiles received was not the same law as what we received, okay, when we came up out of Egypt, all right? That law was like, thou shalt not murder, okay? The Gentiles had a law of sacrifice. They had a law of murder, okay? Remember Genesis 9 and 6, okay? That was way before Israelites were formed, but did not the Lord say, he said, whosoever shed of man's blood, by man shall his blood be shed? Mm. That's a law. Did not we have a law that says, thou shalt not murder? Well, obviously, the, the Gentiles had that law, too. When you go into the Hammer B Codes, which was another way of saying Nimrod, okay, um, there were certain codes in the Hammer B Codes that were similar, okay, to the laws that the Most High gave unto Israel. But specific laws concerning sacrifices, uh, concerning the, the hen, the amount of flowers we to use, the setting up of the Levites, the ribbon blue and the fringes, no, that wasn't given unto the Gentiles. That was given unto Israelites. But the basic law of moral, even adultery. Remember, when Abraham had his wife Sarah, did not the Most High send a spirit into the men that took Abraham's wife when he lied and said that that well, actually he didn't lie. Okay, technically speaking, that was his sister. That was his um, that was his father's daughter from another woman that he dealt with and became his wife. Okay, so he told him that that was his sister instead of his wife. But did not the Most High send a, a, a deaf angel to those men that took his wife and said? That if you, that's another man's wife, you're a dead man. That's the law of adultery. But wait a minute, I thought the Gentiles wasn't receiving the law. And remember, when we read Genesis, the 20th chapter, they got mad at Abraham and said, you almost caused us to sin. Well, you almost caused us to sin. But wait a minute, if the laws was only given to Israelites and if sin is transgression of the law, then why you got a Gentile in Genesis, the 20th chapter, cursing out Abraham down there, saying that you almost caused me to sin against God, okay, by me taking your wife. Isn't that adultery? Mm. See that? But that's another topic we're going to do. All right? Because there's certain laws the Gentiles did have. That's why the Lord brought the flood in Genesis. Because they became wicked. How do you want to become wicked without knowing righteousness? Sodom and Gomorrah. Sodom and Gomorrah. What was the whole purpose of that? They were homosexuals. But if the law wasn't given to the Gentiles, then why is the Most High judging them for their wicked acts? Isn't homosexuality against the words of God? See, the Gentiles had the word, but they didn't have the precise law that the Most High gave unto us. He didn't make a covenant with them. You understand? So that's another topic in itself. But yes, the Gentiles did receive the law. That's why the Most High was judging them. Okay, for their wickedness and evil. And when you read Wisdom of Solomon in the 12th chapter, he told you that he gave the Canaanites a time, a space of repentance. Mm -hmm. Little by little, he began to cast them away. But because they refused to do that, that's when the Lord rose up the Israelites to take and kick them out of the land and say, well, I'm going to give this land over to um, Abraham's children anyways. So... You know, so that's it. That was it on that, man. So go back to um Joshua, okay, chapter 6, verse 25, because we understand it was like a 115-year difference between um Ruth and Rahab, I think, was a 115-year difference. So how can Matthew write them both back to back like that, like as if it was only a 25, 30-year difference? But that's because Matthew's wanted everything to be divisible by 14. That's why. All right, because we do, when you read Matthew chapter 1, verse 17, it doesn't add up when you go into the chronologically. But that's not the point of this video. That's another topic we got to do. And if brothers wish for us to do that, just email us and we'll do that one. Because I got some of the notes already started on that. Okay. With the references to prove that. That Matthew wrote his own chronolog chronologically. Okay. With the Chronicles. And when he wrote his own chronology, he wanted everything to be divisible by 7 and 14. Even if you, even if you had to omit them names out of there, that's what he did. And just brought out the main characters. Okay, um, so go back to Joshua chapter 6, verse 25. Right. And Joshua saved Rahab the harlot in life. Right. 
and her father's household and all that she had. Right. And she dwelt in Israel even unto this day. So you had a Gentile woman, okay, and not only her, but her father's household. All right, so you had a Gentile woman that was willing to submit to the God of Israel to Israel. So because of that, the Most High told Joshua to save her and her household. Does that sound familiar? Like maybe an Acts 10 chapter situation with Cornelius, okay, when he submitted to Peter and the God of Israel, and then his household was delivered and saved. But you said that they had to be Israelites for that, right? But here Joshua says chapter, it's the same situation. All right, Rahab and her household were saved. Those were Canaanites that the Most High told Joshua saved them. Why? Because they submitted to the God of Israel and they became servants. Just like with Cornelius, he's a Roman centurion. Why is he bowing down to a Jew slave? Because that's RCM right there. All Gentiles, I don't give a damn about their position in this world that's destined to be destroyed. All of them are supposed to be bowing down to an Israelite man. And submit because the scripture says that the children of them that afflicted thee shall come bending unto thee. You understand? Read it one more time, Joshua chapter 6, verse 25. And Joshua saved Rahab the heart of the life and her father's household, right? And all that she had, and she dwelt in Israel even unto this day. Now, there's a reason that they did that not because she was just a Gentile, but because of her actions, she was saved by her works, right? Because she hid the messengers. Because she hid the Israelite messengers. When the, when the Jericho king set out to destroy, when word got around there, they had Israelites in, the, in their uh, country. He wanted to kill them. So instead of turning them in like she was supposed to, she hid them because she heard of the God of Israel kicking everybody's ass. And, and she knew that the men of the Lord were part of the people that the Lord was using to kick everybody's ass, like what we did with the Amorites. You understand? So she got scared and she said, I'm willing to submit. And eventually she dealt with it as a light man. Okay, we're not going to have a Gentile woman amongst us. Because the only, remember, the only Canaanite woman, the only the only Canaanite that was saved amongst her was her household. Mm -hmm. So you didn't think she was going to marry again? So who you thought she was going to marry? If she was to deal with a man, who was that, who was that man going to be? She couldn't deal with her household because they were her relatives. So if she was to deal with a man, who would that have been? It would have been an Israelite man. Okay? Like the same one in Matthew, the first chapter in the fifth verse. Because there was no Canaanites that were saved out of Jericho. They were all pretty much destroyed. The only one that was saved was Rahab and her household, which was probably her father, her mother. Okay? Yeah, because we had the laws of war, man. The laws of war tells you about that. If you mm -hmm. see a beautiful woman from amongst the captives, most of the time, their father and mothers were killed. And she had to shave her hair off to mourn for them for like 30 days, you know, and be purified and cut her nails and all that stuff. Yeah, a lot of that had to happen, but... The Lord said, once that finish happened, you take that woman for yourself. What's that? Deuteronomy 21, right? Yeah, Deuteronomy 21. Yeah, yeah Deuteronomy 24. That's in the law. Okay? But the bottom line is they had to submit to the God of Israel through us as our servants and slaves. That's RCM, part of it. Okay? And that's the justification of the Gentiles. Right? All right. Because she hid the messengers which Joshua sent to spy out Jericho. Right, because Ruth was about 1310 B.C. And the time of Jericho, I believe, was about 1425 B.C. Ruth was about 1310 and Jericho was 1425. So that's about like a, a little over a 100-year gap between the two. See, Matthew just gets to the point, all right? He didn't bring in everybody else in between that time, mm -hmm. you understand? But he got into the point, and which is another video we're going to do. To show you the reason why he did such things. And everything will be divisible by 14 or 7. Alright, so he omitted generations and things of that nature. And remember, Matthew was a man. Okay, he put it like there's certain ways that you can say names. You understand? But it all means the same way. Okay, Rahab, Rahab is the same thing. There's different ways of saying certain names. Okay, Saul, Paul. You know what I'm saying? They all mean the same thing. They're just different ways of saying it. Okay, Michael or Michael. It's the same thing. Micah and Michael is the same name. Okay, Micah the prophet or Michael the prophet. But it's spelled Micah, but the other one's named Michael. But it's the same name. It's just different ways of saying it. Okay, give me Acts 11 and 13. Okay, because this is a similar situation I brought out that happened with Cornelius. And I'm continuing to bring it out. Even if other men don't want to bring it out, it's going to continue to be brought out. Because it's part of the scriptures. And if it's part of the scriptures, that means it's justified to be taught. If it's justified to be taught, then, it, then people are justified to learn it. The correctness of it. Acts 11 and 13. Uh, Eric. Yes. Tell your father.